Hello, everybody. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Happy Fourth of July. <laughs> Red, white, and blue. That's our theme today. Um, yeah. And you got me on this one. <laughs> Red, white, and blue what? Flowers. Oh, gosh. Red, white, and blue flowers. Okay. We are going to talk about our favorite red, white, and blue flowers today because, well, stars and stripes, right? Patriotic day. Um, so, yeah. we're talking patriotic flowers. But there's what? a lot of flowers that aren't red, white, and blue. Well, yes, there are. Yes, there are. <laughs> a lot of yellow is going on. Um, so a lot of yellow is going on. Do you know why that is? That's a good question because it's kind of sunflower season, you know, like the heliopsis. Some of those are starting to bloom. Um, no, I don't. I think, I think, I don't know for sure. Here's a challenge for all you viewers out there. <laughs> Why are there so many yellow flowers? What, what is, what is purpose does get, do yellow flowers serve? Um, I'm thinking, I had read somewhere once that yellow is a color that the pollinators hone in on. Well, so the yellow yeah. center, the yellow pollen is generally yellow, golden yellow, or orangey yellow yeah. color. So I think that may have something to do with it. But I actually have no idea. I was How actually about that? Look, I was looking for that too, because because yeah, there's there's abundance of yellow. There's there's a lot of white, and purple, but you know, blue is not very common. It's, well, a true blue flower is yeah. not very common at all. I mean, yeah. there's there's several species that I can think of right now that are blue, but they kind of vary in their hue from like a pale cornflower blue to a really super deep blue. My my favorite blue flower are bachelor buttons. Oh, I got some of those. Centauria cyana. This is the annual version. Yeah. There's also a perennial version, but it is less blue. And I just picked these. This is this is really a true blue. It doesn't have a whole lot of purple in it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a nice medium blue. It's not a it's not a deep blue. And the irises that are blue, they they kind of have purple tones to them too. There's only one or two species, or I should say varieties, that have a true blue color. But yeah. this is this is my favorite blue flower. It's. And that's a, that's a very cute little flower, and you always think of you know violets, maybe even creeping Charlie. I mean, those yep, yep. those have blue in them, but they're yep. not big flowers. You don't they're see not, yeah. huge blue flowers unless you start. I like false uh, blue indigo, like that teasy. Right. Yep. That's a pretty yep. plant, but it's a unique flower head and stems. So that that would probably be my blue. Your blue. Well, you like pollinators, yeah. so you chose a native blue flower, yeah. And now they have yeah. white, Elba, and they have oh, yellow. Oh, yellow, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. But uh, so I don't know if those are native ours or if they, if, if it was all blue and now they're trying to incorporate other colors. No, I think the cream wild indigo is a native for sure. And then there's the yellowy one, that's also a native, but they're, you know, indigenous to various areas. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's my blue. And What's that's your, your white? Blue. What's your white? Um, I have to go with... An, Probably an Asiatic lily, kind of. You know, I like big lilies, so. The white one just really stands out, so. But I like white mixed with other colors. Like, like your poppies that have the purple and the white. Oh, yeah, if yeah. they're white. So to me, a white is a great compliment, so. Hmm, got it. I find it hard to design with. It doesn't <laughs> pop with lots of other yeah. colors really easily. My favorite white flower is Lily of Valley. I absolutely love Lily of the Valley. I grew up with it. It's one of my favorite scents in the springtime. It always blooms around Mother's Day, uh, Convalaria genus. And it, it has a lot of different species depending upon where you go around the country. It's, it can be a native in certain areas, but it is just this heady, heady scent. And it's fun to pick a little bouquet of them. You just pull those stems out gently and they break at just the right length. They separate from the plant. You can put them in a little vase on your nightstand. It just it literally will fill your room with scent. So that is my yeah. my favorite um, white flower, Convalaria, which is which orchids is which is toxic. I don't, <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't like orchids so much. I mean they're Not fine, but they don't have they don't have a, a scent to go with them. They don't you know they bloom. The blooms last forever. Some no. of my orchid blooms last for golly four or five, sometimes six months. But you gotta wait a long time for them. You know, wait a year or two years sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And carnations, probably white carnation. Oh, dianthus, yeah. You always have, yeah. They when you have nice the old too. suits on, the black suit, white tie, and whatever. Oh, yeah, that was that was an Red era. Tie. That was like a hundred years ago. Yeah, they have the white yeah. carnation, carnation there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And they have a nice spicy scent too. Carnations smell good. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that would be, you know, I'm thinking of the song. Roses are red, violets are blue. There's no white in that song. 
I don't know. <laughs> roses are red, and violets are. Oh, I know that song. Yeah, yeah. Roses are red. But there's no white. My oh, there's yeah. not. I love violets are blue. And the la, 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 la. I don't know what the rest of the song is. No we can make up a verse. We can make up a verse. Oh, my goodness. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> okay, red, 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 red. Oh, because I mean, that's where that song comes up. Red roses, I like. Yeah, that. I miss yeah. Red roses has when a lot I, of meaning. Culturally. When I first started growing flowers, I I was into roses. That's what yeah. I grew. I was living down in Dallas, going to college at the time, and the Fort Worth Botanic Garden. Oh my goodness, the roses that are there. Yeah. I mean, you know, roses. Texas has a great climate for roses. And uh, yeah, the Fort Worth Botanic Garden just kind of knocked my socks off. I was like, I want to grow roses. And then, you know, I, I soon discovered, oh, malathion. Ooh, that's a nasty chemical. <laughs> I mean, to keep those things alive. And that's why, you know, with, with, our, two, with our two priorities as Master Gardeners, local food and pollinator health, please avoid grocery store flowers. Please avoid yeah. those flowers that have a lot of miles attached to them. We have a lot of, here in Olmsted County, we have a lot of wonderful local folks growing flowers. They contribute like to you. pollinator like health, you. like me. <laughs> um, they contribute to pollinator health. They're grown organically for the most part, so they're using nice farming practices. You're keeping money in the local economy, and you're not, you're not serving a system that actually damages our pollinators with a lot of chemical usage and the folks that are handling them every day yeah. and growing them. So those those flowers that you pick up that aren't locally grown generally are some of the not safest for the for the environment and for the flown, people yeah. and they're and they're certainly certainly not stimulating our local economy. So always think about local flowers if you can. A yeah. simple Google search will find some for you and yeah, this is the and natives. This and is natives. And natives. If natives you know are awesome that, local yeah. flowers. Yeah, which I guess if I if I had a red flower that I'd like, it would probably be um, Lobelia cardinalis, cardinal flower, okay. which is a great attractant for hummingbirds. Yeah. Likes would be kind of not not so much a perennial, a native perennial, but it it can walk around and it reseeds itself. And I believe that particular flower to germinate it, it needs a host plant. Yeah. I think of uh, blue gramograph. So yeah. it's kind of cool. Yeah. You want to plant those together to help each other grow. Yeah. So yeah. Not sure if it's blue gramma grass or um, side oats gramma. Yeah. Can't remember, but yeah, or a little blue stem, but yeah. Yeah, so that that's a nice red one, and it's a native. It, it grows here in the right location. It's kind of picky. We have a, a giant hardy hibiscus, right? It's probably mm -hmm. about, it's about five feet tall. So that's pretty brilliant red. Um, we got one that's a little bit darker. And then I was, I, one thing I, I did forget about white ones is our hydrangea. I got, Annabelle hydrangea, right? Oh, that's Big, yeah, that's white a, that's a white. Yeah, yeah that's a I figured you white. would have chosen Culver's root for your favorite white flower because you love those pollinators, um, those natives. It's it's a, it's a you know it, go, it it's it, it should go in a bouquet or something like that or something or you know, cause oh, it, of course because yeah. it's those spires yeah right? yeah kinda, yep. yeah so yep. but, oh but the bees just go crazy over yeah there, so it's but, a good one yeah it's a nice one for me so the, that's the um our list of <laughs> that's our list of red white and blue flowers exciting huh. So with that, <laughs> <laughs> boy, did we Ooh, really go out. We, Fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll do that in the background. So anyway, with that, um, happy 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. And garden on, Kelly. Garden on, Tom. I just want to tell you Wayne all the time. I know. That on. He's That's why a, I started. That's yeah, why good. I thank you. You're okay. smart that way. Good. Yes. All right. Garden on, Wayne. Yep. Tom. Garden on. Hey, <laughs> garden on, folks. Garden on. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.